Well, Anthony, here we are, and I'm That's very good. excited about this whole business of uh, yeah. we're, we're looking at other people's mail, aren't we? We're, we're opening like the, the letter to the Corinthians. Isn't that amazing? And reading what Paul yes. wrote to them. And, and uh, imagine the time lapse. Oh, yeah. Since, uh, you know, the year 53 or, or so, which yeah. he wrote this thing, is astonishing. Isn't yeah. It? Would Paul ever have imagined us out here reading with such interest these, these That's things right. that... Uh, isn't that amazing? That he uh, had written to yeah. those folks. So. I don't think he expected the world to go on for another nearly 2,000 years. Probably not. 2, years. Right. That, that, that. It's always just on the rise in the yeah. second coming. Yeah. It doesn't mean they got the timing wrong. Mm. They don't think they expected. They didn't know, of course, but they expected less than yeah. uh, two millennia. Yeah, yeah. But here we are Sorry. pouring over these extraordinary yes. words. And, and the value to us today is, is tremendous. Very, uh, it must very be, great. if only because this book has been translated from the original Greek more than any other document, mm -hmm. read by far more people than mm -hmm. any other piece of literature, Indeed. bestseller. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that in itself is extraordinary. Isn't it? Well, you know, the, uh, uh, the Corinthians written to the folks at Corinth, specifically yeah. written to the Christians there. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. we get the background for those folks uh, in the book of Acts, as we mm -hmm. do often mm -hmm. yes, uh, in these course. different places, different yep. cities, but yep. uh, Acts 18, mm -hmm. if a person wanted to go back and yes. kind of follow up and, and yes. uh, see how all this got going at Corinth. It's all fascinating, and yeah. one could mention the Holman Bible Dictionary, one amongst many. Mm. But one needs to own a good Bible dictionary, yes, I indeed. think, to do intelligent Bible study. Yes, It just adds meat to the whole thing effort, doesn't it? Absolutely. See, these were real human beings. They got up in the morning just like we do. Yeah, yeah. They were human. They were fallible. Mm. On the other hand, God was using these people in a very special way yeah. to write to us this yes. long time. Isn't afterwards. that something? Yeah. Yeah. To our advantage. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, it's interesting that we talk about context and how important the context is to understand the scriptures, but that can include historical context sometimes. Absolutely and, right. Uh, the uh, absolutely right. the context of yeah. what was going on in these yeah. places and yeah. what was happening and where yeah. and where were they and and Paul and, was a Pharisee of the Pharisees yeah. a Jew you know and yeah. that gets us immediately to one of our major themes is that the God they're talking about here ah. is not the triune God of later theology yeah. no one has heard of that yet no <laughs> isn't that yeah. phenomenal yeah. I think that's quite fascinating Jesus was a Jew salvation is of the Jews yes Paul is a Hebrew of Hebrews indeed. It's wonderful to me that God entrusted the oracles of God, the Old Testament, and really the New, almost entirely to Jewish people. Indeed. Luke is the only probable exception. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you think about it, that uh, Jewish brothers mm -hmm. really wrote the New Testament. They did. Uh, as you they say, did. with the possible exception of Luke, yes. and, and don't know. But, uh, right. uh, yeah. but it's tremendous. Right. Right. And they were Absolutely. truly one God people. Oh, absolutely. Uh, they, they weren't yeah. faking it and saying, oh, no, no. now they're just one God. No, but actually, he's two or three no. different ones, you no. know, or he's two or three different persons That's or right. whatever you want to say. But they, they were very serious. Yeah, God right. is one. Absolutely. And, uh, what Jesus called the great commandment in Mark oh, yeah. I love yeah. that, the great commandment. Yeah. And he's not doing a boring doctrine. That's you right. know, you get this cry, well, teach me Christian living. I'm not interested in doctrines. <laughs> what do you mean? You're not interested in teaching? Because doctrine means, means teaching. teaching. Whether right. you're teaching about having a, a good marriage or mm -hmm. disciplined children or about who God is. <laughs> yes, yes. The necessity of, of linking up with the real God, the That's only right. true God. That's right. Which is really the first thing. If you do the rest of the stuff, you're just doing humanism and good yeah, ethics, yeah, stoicism. Yeah. Sure. But you better get the God thing right. Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is all about yeah. God, <laughs> so we, we, you would think we'd want to get that part of it right. I would <laughs> imagine That's when right. we get to 1 Corinthians 8, you know, we're going to have this marvelous statement oh, yes. of the Shema, Absolutely. the hero Israel, fascinating, yeah. and with all of the discussion that's going on with these giants of Christology mm -hmm. who write endless books on who Jesus is yeah. and who God is, it, it's really quite appalling to think that we might not even know, you know, we're not oh, even collectively agreed on who God and Jesus are. Yeah. Well, then, are we doing the Christian faith? Can you do it without knowing who God and Jesus are? 
It raises that question. It is interesting to me that that was not the picture in the New Testament. You don't have all of the apostles yeah, so. and other disciples all at each other's throats, <laughs> battling over who is God. They knew God really is just one individual, the, one person. One Father. Yahweh. Absolutely. The Father. The Father. Yeah, John 17 and 3. That's right. So It's enough. It uh, should be enough. And yet, yeah. uh, today, unfortunately, everything is an argument. Oh, my land, yes. I've noticed, you see, in, the, in, the, in my reading in theology, theological books, and I've got five, six thousand back here, which I've collected uh, secondhand yeah. over many yeah. years. Yeah. The word problem, I think, is the most famous word. Mm. Everything's a problem. <laughs> I don't think it was meant to be yeah. a problem. Yeah. It may be that we are the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Reading it through our Greek, Hellenized, philosophical notions of various ideas. Post-biblical Christians, really, yes. Yes. it's shocking how far away from the, yes. the roots of That's one... Right. Individual is gone. I think that, so. Uh, but at least that's our thesis, isn't yeah, it? The people absolutely. know where we're coming from. Certainly. Uh, the church historian Harnack is the great hero of that idea mm. that from the second century, the church fell into the hands of aliens, Greeks, yes. in fact. Yes. All the leaders in the church before that were Jews. Mm. Then suddenly they're all Gentiles, bringing with them, as Justin Martyr did, a philosophical training professionally. Mm. Mm -hmm. What if he then reads his Greek philosophy, heaven forbid, but I think he did it. <laughs> <laughs> into the text, and yes. then the whole thing yeah. goes wacko. And it's, it's shocking. It's shocking. That if that has seen, happened, yeah. then this needs yeah. to get people's attention. Absolutely. And uh, I think so. so I think uh, we're not going to be reading uh, in here about uh, uh, the the notion of two or three individuals as God and all that. You're, never, you're not going to find that in your Bible. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's totally fascinating. And I think modern commentary largely concedes that point. If you read carefully, although they may try to defend the system you know, in, in mm. some way, they're really admitting that this complexity is the best refutation of uh, Trinitarianism, mm, mm -hmm. is the sheer complexity that you've got to have yes. words like usia, meaning being, <laughs> yes. hypostasis, I'm yeah. using the modern Greek pronunciation, yeah. uh, to describe all that. And then argumentation, endless fighting, mm. excommunication, oh banishing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that tell anybody with a modicum of common sense yes. that something oh went goodness, yes. wrong. Yeah. So it's, it's good then if you're, uh, if you're thinking about reading in your New Testament, whether it's 1 Corinthians or any of the other writings, to keep in mind that the guiding principle is Yahweh alone is it's God. God. There's only one who is God. That's Him. Isn't that wonderful? And, uh, no one else gets to be God but him. <laughs> I think it's a marvelous yeah. solution to be in. Then you get these really extraordinary arguments. Well, God must be three because yeah. he has to have somebody else to love. <laughs> well, that might work for human relations, but don't read all of that into God. If he wants to be one yeah. person and is, then he is a jealous yes. God. No, he is. And at our risk, then, we promote others who are God, who <laughs> really are not God. That, of course, is idolatry. No. Uh, isn't it? It's yeah. fascinating to me that we have people, actually it's philosophizing, if you will, yes, it is. Uh, saying God has to have someone to love, so he had to have been multiple persons. If mm. they just had one scripture that had ever said <laughs> that, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, right. They don't have one. Yeah. It's just out of their own heads. It is. It, it's, it's, it's ridiculous invented. stuff. Yes. It's terrible things. Or else the argument we had uh, recently, yesterday we were doing this, this big session, that God could not use just a mere man. Oh, yes. What, <laughs> Anthony, are you suggesting that God and Jesus are in a relationship of God and not God? That's Psalm 110. Right. Yes. Well, wait a minute. A mere man <laughs> could not deal with us in the salvation work. Wait a minute. Who said? Yes. I thought God is the one who gets to decide <laughs> who mediates yeah. between him and mankind. Who are we to tell God his business and what he can exactly. use and who he can use That's right. and how he can accomplish his purposes? What, yeah. what if First Timothy 2 verse 5 isn't it? You know, that should be it. Or John 17, 3. But yes, yes. There is one God, obviously the Father there, 1,300 times mm -hmm. the Father, and one mediator between yes. that one yes, God who yes. is the Father and mankind, the man beside yes. Jesus. End of argument. That's right. That's right. But what I just said there is enough to create a yeah. fury of confusion. And you know, uh, you, you think about it, God used one man, yeah. Adam, yeah. to bring forth the entire yes. human race. Yeah, and if God chooses to use a man, his, his yes. only begotten son, 
uh, than uh, to bring forth mm. a race of people who are immortal yes. and who will never die and who, uh, well, anyway, who are we to tell God you can't do that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you, you mentioned there the word immortal. I mean, when you think about that, we're dealing here with the biggest subject of all in, in current time, we're watching mm. this election stuff, oh, which is yes. highly engaging. Yes, yes. This candidate one thing, somebody else arguing something. Right, else. right. But all of this is of no con consequence ultimately. Mm -hmm. The only thing that counts is immortality. Yes, yes. And that's what we're right. dealing with here. Yeah, it's wonderful. It is. My goodness. Well, and then okay. true to, uh, to what we're saying, Paul begins his writing here as he tends to do with, with his yeah. writings Very much so. uh, by identifying yes. himself. But first of all, yes. uh, and above all, I yes. put it that way, Bumble. he is identifying the God that he is here, sir, and the, the one who is his Lord. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Uh, Absolutely. So his God, yes. who is yes. the Father, Yahweh, yes. and his Lord, who yes. is. God's it's human son. I, I love that. It's very yeah. fair that he would give us a human model. Isn't yes. It? It's, it's rather hard to imagine relating to a, a God Jesus, mm -hmm. who's really got it made before he starts, <laughs> yes. knows none of the struggles that we go through. So right. it's a brilliant scheme to me, mm -hmm. but it's not something I have to say that was clear to me. Maybe I wasn't listening in my mm -hmm. Church of England days, that's about 50, 60 years ago. <laughs> I maybe wasn't listening, but I got no clear impression of any of the mm -hmm. stuff. I was vaguely to be good, so I could go to heaven when I die. And when we get to 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to find something about the resurrection, which uh, is yes. completely alien mm -hmm. to what I learned mm -hmm. yeah, in yeah. the Church of England. Well, this is an exciting writing. It is a yes. wonderful uh, uh, privilege that we have to, oh, yeah. to look into these things. And uh, so here we are. Let's, let's begin then in verse 1. Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus, and our brother Sosthenes, mm -hmm. to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place mm -hmm. call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord mm -hmm. and ours, mm -hmm. grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Oh my goodness. It's a mouthful and yet it's not. It's <laughs> very organized. Paul mm. is a brilliant person. He writes uh, a summary of all the principal players in the drama, as good writers do. Yes, yes. There's so much packed in there, one could say. I love the fact that, that Jesus is their Lord and our Lord. And we must make this point, it's not known to people, that cannot be their Yahweh and <laughs> yes. our Yahweh. You cannot put a... Uh, possessive pronoun in front of the word Yahweh. It doesn't mm -hmm. work. Yeah, yeah. Just like we don't say our Dan. Mm -hmm. Now in the north country part of England we might. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to add that. <laughs> but we don't. And we don't with Yahweh. So when we've got our Lord, we're not talking Yahweh here. We're talking the Lord Jesus, yes. the Lord Messiah. Yes. Luke 2.11 solves all problems. The one born, you know, this mm -hmm. yes. marvelous announcement of the angels <laughs> is the Messiah Lord. Not the God Lord. Nobody thought that God got born. <laughs> In those days, right? Yeah. Isn't that isn't that amazing? Um, He's the Messiah, Lord. Well, I love it, and and uh, you know, I, I I said recently, I think, wouldn't it be great? Paul begins each of his letters by clearly identifying who his Absolutely. God is Absolutely. and who his Lord is, Absolutely. and they're not one and the same. And they uh, uh, <clears throat> wouldn't it be great if every Christian minister would begin their messages by, first of all, clearly identifying <laughs> who God is, the Father, <laughs> and then clearly identifying yes. the, the yes. Lord, who is Jesus. Yes. And Lord doesn't mean God in these cases at all. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I too had to uh, come to understand uh, that. I used to think that. that was, I know, we all did. I, uh, yes, and so you could put it this way, uh, that there is a vast and, and rather terrifying equivocation on the word Lord. Yes, the whole thing is yes. based on well, Jesus is Lord. Well, that's the word for God. Yeah. Therefore, Jesus is God. Yeah. That is fallacious. Total, totally false. What if there are two lords? One in Psalm 110 that isn't God, and right. one that is. Yes. So that whole thing. I, I hope younger people will be hearing what we're saying. Absolutely. Will save themselves yeah. a lot of trouble. <laughs> there are two lords. Yeah. One of them is the Messiah Lord, Luke 2:11. Exactly. The other is Yahweh's Messiah. That's Luke 2:26. 
that's not so hard. I mean, are we confused right. as to whether the president, the vice president, are they the same person? <laughs> are they the same rank? I don't think so. <laughs> this is very easy. It was meant to be not brain-breakingly difficult. Yes, my goodness. Well, the, uh, so I think uh, that clarity is, is very uh, wonderful. Yeah, and all you have to do is ask yourself, what kind of Lord is yes. right. Jesus? Is yes. he the kind of Lord that is God Almighty, uh, that is Lord in himself innately, or is he Lord, as Peter tells us, who is made Lord by wow. someone else. He's made Lord Acts by two. God. Acts 2, and quoting yes. Psalm 101. Exactly. Keep yeah, going there back you go. to that. That's right. Isn't that marvelous? Yes. These apostles had proof texts. Yes. yes. They had their John 3.16, mm -hmm. it's big time, right? Yes, that's They had right. their refrigerator verses. <laughs> that's but right. they aren't the refrigerator verses that most the people want to use made. now. That's no. right. <laughs> so I, I, you and I have talked about this before, but here calling on the name of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. from the side certainly suggests that you could pray to Jesus. I mean, I, you, you get this panic of, well, I mustn't pray to... No, I know that prayer is directed to the Father through the Messiah. That's the general principle, but you can still call on Jesus. That's in the Old Testament calling certainly. on Yahweh. Yes, yes. But Jesus, of course, is not Yahweh. <laughs> He's Yahweh's agent. <laughs> but you can still call upon him. Absolutely. Why not? I mean, isn't, isn't it the cry of the heart yes. for help? Save me, you know, Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. you prayed to the wrong person. Wait a minute. Uh, God the Father. He pointed out God the Father. God our Father. I love that. 1,300 mm -hmm. times God equals the Father. And you yes. 1,300 times. I like that. That's 99%. I said this yesterday, I love this stat. 99% of the occurrences of the word God in the New Testament the first of the thought. Oh, wait a minute, I thought they were supposed to be equally God, then you get 50%, 50%. That's no, right. 99%. I mean, doesn't that suggest something? That you right. might ask your pastor to preach on that. Straighten that out. <laughs> well, uh, I love it. Well, I think that would be, a, 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 yeah. going back to my earlier thought, I think it would be a, a nice challenge for every uh, Christian minister to yeah. begin, like Paul does in his books, by identifying who God is That's as right. the Father That's right. and identifying who the Lord is, yes. that is Jesus, the Messiah. And uh, I Isn't like that. that. Yeah. Wouldn't the world be much better off if we just begin every, every teaching that way? Well, yes, and there's this, that you've got a, a billion Muslims Yes. And millions of Jews and a billion Christians, um, all at loggerheads no, my land, yes. about who God is. So we're not talking some dull academic doctrinal right. thing here. We're talking about unity in mankind. That's right. And we aren't there yet. We need Jesus' creed in Mark 12. No, there you go. The Shema, right. the hero is. Why not? What about Jesus defining who God is? That's right. Is that a novel idea? Wouldn't that be interesting? <laughs> we aren't there yet. <laughs> We're not getting sermons on it like we should, very frequently. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. uh, it's interesting, when Jesus does come on the scene, he doesn't come on the scene declaring to the Jews, now I want to let you know that God is multiple persons, <laughs> and that there are three who are God, and, and he doesn't do that. Exactly. Jesus never brings yeah, that. It's not and in story. fact, uh, it's not uh, the Mark 12, uh, 29 that you're yeah. mentioning, and uh, he's, he's going back, and confirming what had already been taught. Absolutely, uh, isn't that brilliant? Long before, yeah. A, a friendly Jew at that point says, yeah. tell me, Messiah, he's checking him out, you know, tell me what the, the really big one is, you know. And he answers with the most Jewish thing you could imagine from Deuteronomy 6, verse, verse 4. That's the creed of Jesus. Well, we talk about the Lord's Prayer a lot, you know. We all yes. want to get the Lord's Prayer right. <laughs> well, what go. about the Lord's Creed? Oh, no, we're going to do the Apostles' Creed. Well, that's not bad. But if you do the, the Nicene Creed, or yes. worse, the Athanasian Creed, yes, yes. you're in a different world <laughs> yeah. from the Bible. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Uh, not a good idea. Uh, not at all. Verse 4. I give thanks to my God always for you mm. because of the grace the, of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, yes. that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 8, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. 
9, God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Positive. Wow. Yeah. Very positive. He's about 10 years away from being killed, Paul wow. is, yeah. and suffered terribly for his ministry. Mm. But it's very positive, isn't it? Yes. It's uplifting material there. So much there. And I paraphrase Excellent. a little bit, I put the word Messiah for Christ, because yeah. people have lost the sense ah, yes. of Messiah as mm. being a very Jewish royal term. Right. And also the testimony of Jesus. People are confused as to what's meant by the gospel of Jesus. Well, it's the gospel about him, certainly, but it's also the gospel that came out of his own lips, the one that he, Jesus, preached, namely the gospel of the kingdom. Without that central code word, that in-house word, gospel of the kingdom, Yes, yes. You know, there are only a certain number of words you can misunderstand in any text before you don't understand any of it, right? That's right. It's That's a foreign right. language, and that was the way it was for me. I didn't know what these words meant. So you've got one of the words for the second coming there, and you're waiting. You just read it for us there. You're waiting for the second coming. I think the revealing of Jesus Christ, the yes. apocalypse, is yes. Yes. another word for the parousia, wow. the second yeah. coming. A single second coming, no problems with dividing it into two or anything yes, like yes. that. But he's coming, and he's coming soon, always. It's always on the horizon. Yeah. So uh, Paul begins, uh, then, as you say, on a very positive note. Mm, he's very very, so. uh, very upbeat and very mm. happy in, in, uh, in all of these things. Yes. But then he's going to turn, and uh, he begins to address problems and uh, yes. difficulties that were That's right. uh, in the, yes. in among the congregation. There. I like that last phrase there, the God who called you to enjoy fellowship ah. with his son, Jesus Messiah, our Lord. Yes, yes. This is something to rejoice over. I like to have fun with, right? Yes, yes. It's, it, it's rather comforting to think of fellowship with God and Jesus. Yes. I mean, that, doesn't that put a sort of cocoon around your yes. life in some way? I, I think so. However desperate things appear That's to right. be, there is some ultimate comfort in that wonderful yeah. fellowship. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. I appeal to you, brothers, mm -hmm. by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but you, you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. Mm -hmm. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. What I mean is that each of you says, uh, I follow Paul, or I mm -hmm. follow Apollos, or mm -hmm. I follow Cephas, mm -hmm. or I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Verse 13, is Christ divided? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, he's really now chastising these folks, uh, correcting them, and uh, uh, yes. because of this tendency for division among them based on whom they thought they were were following. Yes, absolutely. This, uh, somebody has said, uh, with some point, I think, that the World Council of Churches, as we have today, is really a World Council of Factions and Divisions and Heresies. <laughs> yes. there you go. Yeah. A World Council of Heresies and Factions and Divisions. divisions yeah. Denominationalism is the only way we exist. You know, if we all mm. tried to go to church in the same building with every denomination, <laughs> it would be pandemonium. Yes, yeah. So we've agreed to not worry too much about what the guy down the road is doing it might be <laughs> that's right. the opposite of what we're saying that's right. but that's not ultimately yeah. a satisfying or satisfactory situation on this text is it mm. right yes. I want above all things he says mm. the main thing is that you all be united in perfect judgment yeah and isn't that interesting because uh, Paul is not thinking uh, in in such a short fashion that as long as we agree then that's great mm. because uh, as I said here a while back it seems to me that there is something worse than Christians being in disagreement and that is for Christians to all be in agreement yeah. about the wrong oh, thing. Yes, that's a good point. And so to me Paul wants them to all yeah. be of the one same mind and he wants them all to be of the same accord that's if you will. Thing. But that one mind, that same yes. accord is the mind of Christ ah. That that is right and true according to, uh, to according to him. That's exactly right. We're going to come to that very phrase that you mentioned there, the mind of Christ in First Corinthians oh, 2.16. Yes. We have, yes. or should have, 
the mind of Christ, not just the emotions of Christ, not just the goodwill and all that, yeah. but the mind mm. of Messiah, the messianic yes. mind. Yes, yes. That's going to take some training and some work. Mm -hmm. we, we don't we don't just absorb that from the air. Right, right. It's right. got to be through study and work, I think. So, okay. So uh, again, he's he's positing this. Mm -hmm. uh, this question to them is Christ divided yeah, yeah. and of course the obvious answer would be no uh, but he's saying was Christ divided was Paul crucified for you oh oh my goodness <laughs> or were you baptized yes. in the name of Paul yes I thank God that I baptized none of you mm -hmm. except Crispus and Gaius mm -hmm. so that no one may say that you were baptized in my name <laughs> I did baptize also the household of Stephanus yes Beyond that, I don't know whether I baptized anyone else. He just couldn't remember for sure. He That's might have, but, very interesting and worthy of a comment. Uh, People do not know that Jesus baptized more disciples than John. That's uh, John yes, Paul. yes. I've never heard of that. Jesus himself got baptized by John in yes. water. Jesus himself baptized more disciples than John did. Yes. That's right. That's quite clear. Indeed. And so when Paul says, well, were you baptized in the name of Paul? We're not talking about spirit baptism. Yes. There. To be baptized in the New Testament, unless you say to be baptized in the Spirit expressly, mm -hmm. it means to be dipped in water Certainly. as an adult yeah. fully understanding the and, faith. And that's established over and over again in Absolutely. the Scriptures. This isn't hard. Not hard. Uh, and, uh, no. So, uh, so yeah. Paul is going back to their baptism, yes. which is, I think, a, a beginning point in, yes. their, in their faith journey, as it were. And, yes. uh but obviously they were baptized not in the name of Paul or in the name of the others. They were baptized in the name of Absolutely. the Lord, Jesus. Absolutely. And he says, uh, uh, it's just, uh, for Christ did not send me to baptize, mm. but to preach the gospel. Yes. I, I like that a lot. Not to do the dipping. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. Otherwise people would say, well, yeah. I got baptized. Right. You know, he's the one who did That's it. right. So That's right. as Jesus deliberately doesn't do it himself. Exactly. It says there in John 4 that Jesus didn't do the, he baptized, but he didn't baptize. Right. Can you handle that? Of course he baptized. He authorized the baptism. Sure. He didn't do the dipping. Exactly the same thing. He doesn't remember exactly which family right. he personally immersed. Right. Right. But was he saying to some of them, well, you don't need to be baptized? Yes. Of course not. <laughs> That's just absurd. This is not an attack on baptism. Not at all. The, the issue that he's raising is yeah. who baptizes. Exactly. It's kind of like, you know, yes. it, That's right. uh, it would be... Uh, uh, it's not an attack on marriage. No. When you say, I married this couple, that couple, That's I didn't right. marry the other couple. That's right. And you say, I'm glad I didn't marry point. some of you because of this reason or that. And you say, oh, well, marriage is awful sure, then. No, sure. no, 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 no. You know, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah. We're talking here about who yeah. baptizes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and that's, the baptism itself is obviously then. Yeah. Very important, crucial, crucial. Yeah. A Absolutely. public demonstration of of repentance and Absolutely. forgiveness. Certainly, I love the text in Peter about the water. You know, the, in the episode of Noah, is water. We're talking about water. So, in the same sense, baptism now saves yeah. you. Not yeah. the water on your flesh, yes. but the answer of a good conscience yeah. before God yeah. and man. We're not talking about a bath or taking a washing or even no. like the the Jewish. No. Uh, ablutions. Uh, ablutions. Yeah. We're talking about here um, an issue of faith and Absolutely. coming in faith. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Paul has been misrepresented at times mm -hmm. here, saying, oh, Paul didn't believe baptism was important. He never said that. He never said ever. His, his task had been given to him by the Lord, which was specifically to do something that, uh, in a way that many others right. were not, that is to take the gospel message to the Gentiles. Of course. Uh, and, uh, yes. and that's marvelous. But he, uh, but Paul is going to say yeah. that um, I didn't, you know, I didn't come to baptize. Yes. Uh, but he preached baptism, of course, and bapt and he actually did baptize, of course. Uh, of course. Yes. As, as he says right yeah. here. So that's a, been a terrible misrepresentation oh, it, it, on people's it's, it's actually yes. a way of trying to yes. diminish something Absolutely. that's very important in the eyes of God, and that's well, yes. baptism. And the issue of uh, obedience. You know, yeah. so the text, I think, we have to stress it's not preached a lot, is Hebrews 5, 9, that salvation mm. is given to those who obey Jesus. Yes. Well, watch out. The Great Commission says, go into the world, yes. make disciples, teaching them and baptizing them. 
Absolutely. That's very clear. Yeah. And to start arguing about that is yes. really a very great tragedy. The sort of thing that Paul would want yeah. to correct exactly. instantaneously, yeah. I think. Yeah. The, uh, verse 17, uh, verse 17, for Christ did not send me to baptize, mm -hmm. but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, yes. lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. Yes. So he says it's not a matter of just uh, uh, words of eloquence and no. wisdom and so on, uh, but the power of the message itself, uh, and uh, and yep. that's that's tremendous. He goes on, of course, immediately to say, "We do, of course, speak wisdom." I like that. Does anybody think, well, you know, there's nothing to be said? Yes. You just smile. There you go. And exactly. Hope that people will catch the <laughs> gospel right. by that's Moses. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's lots to be said, but the cross, the foolishness of the cross, the idea yes. that somebody died in your place, Excellent. shed his blood, so you could live, that's madness to Greek people. Yes. Yes. But it's the power of God. I like that because Romans 1, 16 has the same thing. Yes. The gospel is the power of God mm. leading to salvation. Mm. I get it. Yes. Now, if you misdefine the gospel, leaving out the kingdom of God yes. element, you now we have a problem. Now yes. yes. You're yes. misunderstanding throughout because there is a school of Certainly. thought that says that the gospel is strictly and only the death and resurrection of Jesus. But that flies in the face of the text in 1 Corinthians 15, we're going to get to later. Surely. But Paul expressly says that the kingdom of God is also part of the gospel. Mm. The death and resurrection are part, Absolutely. important parts. It's essential indeed. aspects. Yes. Essential, but not the totality. Yes, yes. Not the only essential aspect. Not. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, the preaching of Jesus on the kingdom yeah. is made null and void and we don't right. want to go with that one very dangerous you know I was just thinking too uh, Anthony uh, uh, on this question of baptism in that passage would those who are saying that water baptism uh, is not important it's or not uh, water baptism is an option, option. At, at best yes. uh, would they and they would they admit I think here that it's water baptism that Paul is talking about and that yeah. these people were yeah. baptized in water yeah. and he yeah. never says I wish you hadn't been baptized oh, what he okay. says is I'm just glad I didn't personally baptize yes, too many of you because you would be attaching yourselves to me yes. in, in such a way no that's right wherever a human being does baptizing he's not doing it in the spirit yes He's uh, doing it by right. dipping into water. That's so, just a language fact. So we're, and I don't think there's any instance they they did pray for people mm -hmm. that they would, that the spirit would come upon them. Oh, they would yes, receive of course. It. But mm -hmm. there is no inst instance mm -hmm. where you would say they baptized people with the spirit. No, no, that was reserved to exactly. the Messiah. That's right. And, now uh, that's very easy, and it's been not, yeah, well understood by all denominations yes. forever, really. Surely. Uh, in Acts 19, late, that's 25 years after the death of oh, Christ. Yes, yes. Acts 19, he meets these people who have only been baptized in John's baptism. Yes. They hadn't heard of the Spirit coming from the risen Jesus. Surely. They knew there was Holy Spirit, but yes. not this new thing right. from the risen Christ. And so guess what? Paul then baptizes them, and having done that, he lays hands on them and, and they get then, the Spirit. They, yes, then the Spirit comes. It, it's very yeah. simple, but yeah. don't let anybody talk oh, about my land's water not. baptism. Oh, my land's not. Uh, that's a horrible, really a terrible it's misrepresentation a of, the, of the truth. It really is. Uh, it's not very much like Jesus when he is being baptized no. and saying that's important, mm. as he was of John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we say, oh, no, that's not important. Well, aren't we at odds then oh, yeah. with the Messiah himself, with Christ Absolutely. himself. And that's what we dare not yeah. do. We dare not shake our fist at the teaching of Messiah or the teaching of Messiah in Paul. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's so, very dangerous. So that's to threaten our salvation through disobedience. Yeah. Not good. So, well, this is, uh, I think this is very straightforward then. It's very yes. easy. They were baptized in yeah. the name of the Lord Jesus, Absolutely. which is a baptism in water. Absolutely. And he's He's very clearly then saying, that's wonderful, that's great, but I'm glad that I didn't personally do that because you'd be yes. using that 
uh, yes. at least for, for not too many of you, right. because y'all would be all saying, oh, yeah. I was baptized in You were only baptized by Sosthenes. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. That's right. That's right. Isn't that very human? And, and I think maybe this is why Jesus chose not to personally do the baptism. Absolutely. He didn't want the distinction being made. Absolutely. Oh, but I was baptized by Jesus. So rather than by Peter or John that or whomever it else it might have been, uh, I think by Jesus, uh, and and Jesus reserved to himself uh, what God had reserved to him, and that is that he would uh, be baptizing people with Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So, and no, then the others didn't do that. No, yeah. no, that's then, right. Then, We've created a noun, you know, baptism in the Spirit. There is actually no noun, baptism in the Spirit. It does talk about all of us being baptized in one Spirit, in mm, one body. Mm, mm. But that itself entails the water baptism element of it. Mm-hmm. We're very clever at creating words, you see, that don't exist and, and, and building a doctrine on a false concept. So I do think that's very important. Uh, of course, the famous one is in Acts 8, oh, where yes. they listen to the preaching of the kingdom from sure. Philip. And then you can see them lining up to get baptized in yes. water, clearly. Sure, sure. But they hadn't received the Spirit. Yes. So these are separate things. Yes. Well, this is easy, straightforward stuff. And, I think uh, it I, is. I like it. But we both live with this. You know, yes. We can still be wrong. We're, we're waiting for our audience, of course, to, to listen with a bereaved Surely. spirit. And say, well, you, know, <laughs> yeah. you haven't thought of this. But actually what struck me only last week in dealing with this issue of baptism was where Paul says, uh, was it in the name of Paul that you were baptized? I thought, wait a minute, I don't think we're talking about spirit baptism there. Oh, yes. I don't think so. Exactly. We're not. Uh, clearly, uh, I think everyone would have to admit what Paul's talking Absolutely. about. If it had been spirit baptism, would he, would he be saying, oh, I'm so glad I didn't baptize many of you in the spirit. <laughs> that's, that, that's, just this is a total wrong. misrepresentation. Verse 18, for the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, Mm -hmm. but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Mm -hmm. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning Mm -hmm. I will thwart. Yes. Oh my goodness. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. Mm-hmm. Wow. Marvelous, isn't it? Yeah, I like this a lot. It's so it is that powerful. message that brings faith. Yes in the kingdom of God yes. and in the work of God and, and in the Jesus Christ. And the resurrection of Jesus, yes, of certainly. course. But it's not philosophical stuff. Absolutely. It's a wisdom yeah. that is God's wisdom. I, I love that. Yeah. He's, he's not pleased with philosophers ever. Paul is not. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And isn't it interesting that the post-biblical church yeah. basically fell under the sway of yeah. philosophers? Yeah. And we should not be surprised then right. that in post-biblical times yeah. the 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 things that were being spoken, preached, codified, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, took on a, a philosophical Absolutely. tainting, if yes. you will, that Paul would uh, have yeah. sharply disappeared. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Again, the church historian, the prince of church historians, supposedly Harnack, Adolf Harnack, it's a massive piece, his history of dogma. But anybody of the younger generation, particularly, who's planning to do biblical work, you know, later on more intensively, you really should read uh, how Harnack analyzes this well. Mm-hmm. He's simply saying that Justin Martyr is the principal spokesman in the second century, and he's the one who imagines a kind of a second God figure coming into the womb of Mary from outside. Wow, yeah. That's a different story. So the name of the game is to do the Matthew and Luke birth narratives in detail, mm. very clear. The right. angel gets it exactly right and without <laughs> any pages of philosophical stuff, you know. Mary had a baby, actually, miraculously. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yeah. It's not that hard. That's right. She had a baby. This is pretty easy, straightforward it's, stuff. It's wonderful. It? <laughs> yeah. It's written for ordinary people seeking the purpose of life, mm-hmm. the true narrative. So, yes, Greek philosophy is the wrecking agent, I think. And many scholars know this. We're not saying anything that we're inventing here. The, uh, 
Uh, I love it, and I think Paul's very, very straightforward. Paul could have been lean. I mean, he grew up in the Hellenistic world. Yeah, he Absolutely. grew up in the in the environment of, of Greek folks, Certainly. and he could certainly have been leaned in the direction of. Greek philosophy Absolutely. and uh, all of that sort of thing. And if anybody should have been bringing the Greek philosophy to bear, then it would have been Paul, the apostle. Yeah. But instead, no he, doesn't, he doesn't do that whatsoever. No. He is taking them to task yes. uh, here. Uh, anyone that would lean into philosophy, he says, that's not going to work. God has chosen to bring to foolishness those things. For Jews, verse 22, yes. demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. Mm -hmm. Verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified, mm -hmm. a stumbling block to Jews mm -hmm. and folly to Gentiles. Yes. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, mm -hmm. Christ, the power of God mm -hmm. and the wisdom of mm -hmm. God. Wow, I like that a lot. Yes. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Isn't that amazing? It's yeah. very uh, yeah. compact language, isn't yes. it? I love the concentration. Mm -hmm. It's what you might call high octane language. You know, <laughs> yes, it's yes. charged with power. In brief, go. unlike the wordy stuff that we do. Yes, you know, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> it's packed. So Every it's word packed. has an impact. Has an it? impact. Yes, I love that. Yes. Yeah, that's tremendous. Yeah. And uh, uh, I think this is one of those. Yes cases where you could put some air quotes around Paul's word. They, yeah. they didn't use uh, quotation marks in the sense we do. Yeah. I think that's a nice invention we have. Yeah, I, I like uh, that. And, and I think Paul clearly would have used uh, quotation marks around the word foolishness of yes, God. Yes, absolutely. And, and uh, yeah. the weakness of God because yeah. God really has no foolishness and God really no. Is, no. has no weakness. So no. he's saying, but it, it's beautiful language. Yeah. Well, he's well, a very spoken. brilliant man. Yes, Paul. He's absolutely. He's a brilliant, sharp, yeah. uh, trained Pharisee. Gamaliel, you know, he was one of the principal DDs oh, of, yes. the, of the time. <laughs> there you go, tutor. that's right. So he's very, very sharp, as he should be, writing all of this to all of us mm -hmm. for years mm -hmm. and years. And uh, do we really want to get our uh, understanding of life and of essential and important things from people who are, so. were, really, quite depraved they when were. you get down to they it? They really were. Yeah. Brilliant. And yet, yeah, depraved. and and yet yeah. depraved. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Verse twenty-six. Yes. For consider your calling, brothers. Mm -hmm. Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. Mm -hmm. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Mm -hmm. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. Mm -hmm. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, mm. not of any mm. moment as the mm. world sees it, yes. to bring to nothing things that are. Yeah. Ah, I love it. Isn't that amazing? So God. that no human being might boast in the presence yes. of God. Uh, I like yes. that a lot. Wow. And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus. That is because of this God. Yes. We're in Christ Jesus. The Messiah, mm -hmm. who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption, mm -hmm. so that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. Isn't that marvelous? Yes. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, exactly stuff. right. So everybody's put in his place. Nobody yes. can boast and say, That's "Look right. at me! Look at all my qualifications." Right. That's not right. Yeah. I've said to the students at the college over the years, you know, what talent have you got that God didn't give mm, you? Mm. Every talent you have is, is yours by DNA, by circumstance, whatever, isn't it? By inheritance. Our task is to use that talent. Indeed. But you can't say, well, look at me, I look at the talents yes. I've got. No, you, mm. you were given those. That's surely. That's just a, That's a, right. a, a fact. The question is how you use those talents. Wow. Well in the service of God. Isn't this again a good point uh, in the direction of some of what we've been saying that not many of you were quote wise right. according to the world That's right. standards. That's right. uh, yeah. The yeah. the gospel as, uh, as we've talked about yeah. before actually came 
into the possession of fishermen, if you will. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Good, honest businessmen. They good were. people, yeah. certainly. Yes, and, of course. Uh, but not the philosophical no, guys. Not, not, the, that, not right. those no. folks who were... No. And it's interesting, yeah. then, that I think the, the message of the gospel of the kingdom and, and yeah. the message of Jesus Christ really is its purest and its most clear and mm -hmm. understandable mm -hmm. when we read what fishermen, businessmen, yes. and others yes. uh, who were just good people yes. wrote and understood. That's right. We don't get to the complicated stuff no. until you get the switch again. <laughs> exactly. And in post-biblical times, we get the Justin Martyrs That's and right. some of these other fellows yeah. who were wise yes. according yes. to the standards right. of the world. They were yeah. off in, uh, no offense, but sometimes yes. off in La La Land. They really were. And they got a right. hold of the gospel and they got That's a hold right. of the message, yes. but did not remain true to it. That's right. You know, I guess they thought they were wiser than yeah, those fishermen. I think they were. Like they that. were not aware of that danger. Now, I would have to say in their defense that not everything they do is wrong. Oh, sure. A lot of oh, yes. Not, uh, exactly. Irenaeus, of course. Which, with which we would agree. Classical premillennialism, yeah. the idea that Christ is coming back to rule on, on, on earth for a thousand years, very clear in mm. some of those Absolutely. early fathers. However, the doctrine of God is getting messy when yeah. you start playing with the Shema, mm. getting rid of the creed of Jesus and putting in some Greek philosophically worded well, creed, yes. about, creed about being and mm. hypostasis mm. and how the three are one and not really yes, three yes, and not really. It's all been right. a mystery. Oh, yes. That to me smacks yes. of the wrong atmosphere Absolutely. entirely. It's a different world Absolutely. from the world of Paul and Jesus. Wow. So I like this a lot then. Uh, yeah. uh, God has made Christ, Jesus, yes. to be these wonderful things yes. to us. Yeah, and wisdom, he's right. the wisdom we yeah. need. He's, he's the, our rabbi. Yes, he that's is. A bit that's I like that one. Right, John 13, 13, where Jesus says, You call me Rabbi and Lord, yes. and you are doing well. We've forgotten that. See, yes, we yes. love the idea of Jesus died for our sins, yes. and that's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But you can't leave it at that. If you're not going to listen to my son, the voice from heaven says, yes, yes. this is my son, for goodness sake, listen to mm, him. Mm, mm. Not just watch him die on the cross. Yes, yes. So the band that says, what would Jesus do, is fine. Mm -hmm. What would Jesus say? Yes, exactly. Is the other side of that uh, equation yes. that needs to be stressed. I Absolutely. Think. What would he say? Yeah. What is his wisdom to us? Yeah. So then... Uh, we, uh, we, as uh, people, uh, can follow this, these last admonitions, let the one who boasts, mm -hmm. boast in the Lord. Yeah. And I may not boast in myself, but neither should I boast in other people, no. whether even if it is a Justin Martyr or if it's others right, who right. veered away yeah, from this right. pure message yeah. in the beginning that was, was handled and given to the people yeah. often by fishermen. Yeah. If we, if I'm boasting in, but look how smart these post-biblical guys oh, were. Yes. Now I'm partakers in this yes. boasting. I may not be boasting about me, but yeah. I'm boasting in right, other then, human not beings. Much better. That's right. So here we are. So. Why not boast in the Messiah and his teaching? Exactly. Right? The famous words in John's Gospel, the summary and the completion, uh, the climax of his public ministry in chapter 12, verse 44 and onwards, where... He raises his voice. I love that. Yeah, yeah. He gets to shouting, <laughs> underlining, you know, yeah, yeah. In, in, in yellow markers and all that. For goodness sake, don't <laughs> fail to listen to <clears throat> my Jesus' teaching, because <clears throat> you're going to be judged <clears throat> by those words, whether you like it or not. Yes, absolutely. Well, and, and that's what Jesus tells the people yeah. in John 12. Uh, you and know, that's right. That's what he's, he's coming right in there and saying, well, you know, uh, the words which I have spoken, ah. they will judge you in the last day. I think that's phenomenal. Isn't that yeah. beautifully yeah. simple too? I like what you say though. Yeah. Your, your point, if I may yeah. bring it back again, yeah. uh, that people uh, love the fact that Christ died for us, and we so, should, indeed. and that's essential. Yes. Uh, to, they love the fact that he, he uh, was buried and Absolutely. then was raised oh. from the dead. This is essential. Yes, this is uh, critical. But they've lost sight, unfortunately. Awesome. Christians have lost sight. This is awful. Of Jesus as the teacher. Yeah, Jesus as the 
rabbi, as it were. And they yeah. understood that then. Who do we think taught Peter, for goodness sake, <laughs> and James and John? Yes. You know, and, and when the, uh, they came before uh, the tribunal, uh, they, they took note that, what yes. are they, how do these guys know these things? How yeah. do they, and then they took note, they, well, they were with Jesus. Exactly. Jesus taught them. Great question, though. Where did he get what he taught? But he says again very clearly, oh he says, and in John 7, he says, my doctrine, my teaching is not mine. It's his that sent me. And he taught me in Can't uh, be John 8. that, right? Yeah. You know, God is your professor. <laughs> you, you're, you're, <laughs> you you're heads up, uh, head right. start, I That's should right. say, on everybody else. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to resist the temptation to quote the amazing statement from a very distinguished Coral Ridge ministry of Dr. Kennedy where he says, and I quote, many people think that the teachings of Jesus are important, but that's not true. Yes. What actually is important is that God came and died for your sins. Oh my land. Now that, I'm sure this. he would want to, uh, we should let him, you know, amplify that. Sure. But that is a tendency which is to be shunned, I think, and avoided at all costs. The Absolutely. teachings of Jesus are very important. You've yes. decided it. Right. My doctrine, my teachings mm. are not mine. I got yes. them from the Father. Yes. I'm his agent. If you want to listen to the Father, he's going to judge you anyway. Mm. You might as well listen to my teachings. That's right. Because the, they're the stand. That's right. The, the words I've spoken. That's Spirit the, that's and life. Right. They're energizing words. Wow. They're not right. boring doctrines. Absolutely. They are your life. We're exactly. not talking about arguing doctrines. We're talking no. about your energy in your life yes, yes. through the Spirit yes. and the words that are yeah. vectors, we yeah. might yeah. say, I like of, that. The, of the Spirit. I like that. Why not? Yeah. yeah. That sounds good to me. It's beautiful. We're all, we're all searching, especially in America, and we're searching for the, the ultimate remedy for all problems, aren't we? It's this cream yeah. or that sometime yes, lotion. Yes. Always something. Or that's something right. that's, right. that's going to make your life into paradise. And we're missing, though, the words of Messiah. Absolutely. Get a full dose of wow. them and you might feel better. Absolutely. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>